I survived thanks to other people. And I know that because I planned to put myself out because I walked up to the train track to go head first into the train. But I couldn't suicide and it was against my kind of principle. I just thought that's not right because I was born. So I'm glad I fought back, but I wouldn't have without the assistance, there's no doubt about it. Things fell apart for me pretty early in my life. My mother walked away from me at three. My dad worked two jobs a day. Bit of uh, sexual abuse come into it, violence and sex from my sister. I got the abuse from my sister sexually for five years, every night, and also beaten. I never talked really until 29 about any of this. My sister finally left, they got rid of her from the house because I was being too damaged. And I was stuck in that house by myself as a small boy with no food, no body, and I just learned to disassociate. I remember at five, I think I made up my mind that if no one's gonna care for me and look after me or pay attention to me and didn't talk to me, that I'm gonna turn my back on the whole lot. I'm not gonna play ball with anybody. And that's what I did. I remember I was kicking a football around with a couple of kids and they asked me to come back to their house and I just stayed there and their mother just allowed me to stay there. So I just lived with their home. Unfortunately, those adults were into sex parties. That woman passed me on at 13 to one of her friends and they were into child pornography. I hated being a human being, didn't want to grow into an adult, that's for sure. I was saturated in drugs and negativity. I took pride in doing drugs every day. I just lived the street life, hanging around, you know, a lot of petty crime, 14 court appearances, three little jail sentences, two psych institutions, mainly for drug psychosis, living on the street, just sleeping wherever. When you're opiated, it, it doesn't seem to matter. You're kind of insulated inside. But I had a reason why I did it. All I had to do was find that reason. And I'm starting to know now I got terribly fucked up as a small boy. Instead of pointing the finger, I decided to be accountable. I was supported. I wouldn't have done it without support. It changed my life. Alfred Hospital and then Winteringham. I've rehabilitated myself with the drug withdrawal. I've looked at all the uh, emotional problems, psychological problems. I was too much in my own head and it was taking all my energy from me. And I had no outlets, no hobbies, no ambitions, no nothing. It's just, just the drug shit and uh, I started drawing. And uh, I don't know why, but I'll come out with something. And I realised this is uh, therapeutic. It's the only thing I've got where my mind's not thinking from the front part. My mind stopped, but I feel I knew what I was doing because the pictures come out okay. So it was like I had a chance here to get rid of the front, the conscience shit, and some of the subconscious come through. And that was a great relief for me because I couldn't do it through any other forum. I wouldn't open up to counsel or psychologists and I've had them since I was 10. And what I've done is to inspire me, I've got 100 National Geographic magazines given to me and I cut out the pictures of all the white tigers, orangutans in the forest, all these far out pictures and I've collaged my whole lounge room nearly and I sit under there drawing. So when I go home, it's not that world outside. I've got something that says I belong to. They put my artwork up on an exhibition through my pictures. It took them two months to convince me to do it. I didn't want anyone to see it. And they're saying, oh, it's this here means this and that. And I'm thinking, it didn't mean shit. I just did it. You know, actually, I told them that was an accident. I covered it all with green and then black. I stuffed the picture up and they were reading this stuff into it. But that's what it is, isn't it? Anyone can see anything with any art. It's just in the eye of the beholder. And that's how life should be. You know, why humans are so threatened about everything that's different. We're all different. I've got to make sense of all this. This helps me relieve it, I guess. Completing a picture tells me that I didn't just get sick of it. I stuck with it. But I didn't get a chance when I was younger. It wasn't catered for. So now I'm getting a chance. Something in me said no and it'd be worthwhile. You know, life is a good thing. For all we know, we might only get this one shot. And I've got some abilities or qualities 
I want them to be seen, damn it. I'm getting my turn to paint my canvas. His name was Stephen Whitaker. Stephen unfortunately passed away last year. Today we celebrate Stephen's life and artistic achievements. Stephen was a talented artist, but he left a legacy through his art. Stephen never wanted his art to be sold. He just wanted people to enjoy it.